My connection to Guatemala Healing Hands and their foundation began about 10 years ago and I was asked to join the group of surgeons and hand therapists through a friend of mine who is a uh, Canadian hand therapist. It originally started as a, as a medical mission and we deliver health care, surgical care for children primarily, so up to the age of 18 typically, uh, who have injuries or birth uh, deformities, deficiencies related to their hand and upper extremity. And that was recognized as being an important uh, area of care in Guatemala because of the lack of specialization there. And the fact that many Guatemalans live uh, below uh, uh, the poverty level and they work with their hands. They need their hands to make a sustainable living. And having injuries or birth defects from, uh, that involve their hands really limit their ability to um, make a living and look after their families. We basically are there for about two weeks and we have a large assessment uh, group and these hand therapists that uh, are part of the group make um, assisted devices, splints, they provide um, instruction and exercises for patients that will benefit from that sort of care and don't need surgery. They also provide the post-surgical care for the children that we operate on. Again, splinting and therapy and even compression garments because there are a lot of burns that happen because they work or, um, or they, they cook over open flames and sustain a lot of fairly severe uh, burn injuries to the hand. Over time, our group became involved with some communities, uh, more remote communities that were in need of other things. We essentially sponsored or adopted one of the communities up in the mountains of Guatemala called Chichoyalta, Chichoyalto, and um, we have physically been involved with building their school, helping them build their school, uh, latrines, um, uh, clean water sources. We've helped to build um, and purchase um, proper stoves for them to cook on so that they're not cooking on open fires within their their homes which are really essentially huts and so that's a unique component. How has my role changed in the time that I've been involved with Healing Hands? Well it certainly has changed um, in that initially I was I was the rookie surgeon uh, on the team. I was uh, one of two plastic surgeons and then I became the only plastic surgeon has, time, has gone on and um, I was the first Canadian surgeon that became involved in the group as well so that was sort of a unique start and uh, and the only female and I remain the only female surgeon in our group of orthopedic hand surgeons. Over time I've become one of the experienced members of the group and I've become more of a mentor uh, for the new members that do join us and um, I have brought along uh, residents who have now become staff themselves and are continuing to be part of the group which has been a really nice experience for me to see my former resident become uh, a member of this group and, and be a very uh, important member of the group. We basically raise all our own funds uh, to deliver the care there. We support ourselves when we go, but we also raise funds to deliver the care, purchase equipment, and pay the facility for the, um, the hard costs that we uh, incur when we're, when we're there. If someone was interested in doing this kind of work, then there I, now I think there, it's even easier than it was 20, some years ago when I started. Um, I think because we have a global surgery program at McMaster and some of the other universities have that, that is a, a very good resource for people to connect with 
um, people within the organization, uh, surgeons, physicians who have participated in, in missions. And I think another source is the national societies that people are involved in, whether it's general surgery, orthopedics, pediatrics, anesthesia, plastic surgery. A lot of these organizations now have information at, on their website about global surgery, surgery initiatives within their specialty. So I think consulting with the different societies is a really good avenue for um, seeing what's available within your specialty. So why have I continued to pursue uh, global surgery and, and international missions? Well, I actually began 20 some years ago as a resident. I had an opportunity to go on my first mission and I remember very distinctly hearing about that and thinking that that fit with the model I had in my head from when I was a in high school about becoming a physician. Uh, that it really um, seemed to fit with what I believed a physician should be doing. Helping other people that otherwise don't have access to, uh, to the quality of care that we certainly have in Canada. I think it was a combination of um, working somewhere where there are people who are ex that have extreme need and are very, very appreciative for uh, the care that, that we could deliver to them. Um, and it, it truly is a very, um, almost a selfish kind of uh, choice. You really get so much from, from doing this kind of work. You, you give, but you receive an awful lot. And the satisfaction from doing that is, is very rewarding. And, and um, I wanted to continue doing that. I, I just got so much more, so much from it that I wanted to continue.